And the second thing is that we've done these things before, like some few introductions to them before. So because of that, there are some certain things I won't be wasting time on today. So maybe just go through them. I'm very sure, Mr. Akan, you are always in the class. Yeah. So we go through them easily. So we'll be able to get to the point. And fortunately enough, head boy, Mazi, is trying to hold a class also in the evening. So that's a very good opportunity for you guys. You can as well be in that one too. So in the evening, the link will be sent in the group as well. So having this and that one, I'm very sure you won't be, you won't be having any issue with the math. One or two course, yes. So let's just give it our best. The first thing there is, I use the material because of the soft topics. I need the, the units, so I won't be going out of the material. The first thing there is. Okay. So, taking functions first, we've introduced ourselves to the concept function. Function. I So I'm going to imagine that this is the function box. It serves as the computer. So here it is now. And I'm going to take a value, input the value. Let's say the value is three. This thing is a function. Something goes through it. It might be, the function might be squaring. It squares anything that enters it. That might be the function. So by the time it, this will be input, it processes it. That is by squaring. So by the time the thing comes out, it will be this thing squared because this function is a squaring function. So it becomes nine, that's three squared. So if it is squared, that is this function, then having X here means my function will become X squared. Are we together? So having seven here, my function becomes seven squared. Now, if the function here now is to be removing three from any number that enters it, so if x is my function, is my value input, then the output will be what? x minus three. So if my value is seven, the output will become four because the value, the function of this function, let me put it that way, what this function is doing exactly is to remove three from anything that is being input into it. So that is one call function. If x is now the value, then the function is represented as anything. It might be g of x, f of x. This is originally x. But the function is minus 3 of x, removing 3 from x. So that means we can call the function f. We can call it g. We can call it h. So f of x, that is when I input x inside this function, this function of x is going to be x minus 3. So when I'm imputing seven into this same function, it will be f of seven equals four. So that is function. Then I can say x is my function, x is my value, and f of x, f of x is the function. So the function can also be represented as y. If I say, the first thing is to introduce the term function, and that's what I'm doing. I'm explaining what the concept function means. If I say f of x equals x squared minus seven x plus three, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that x is a particular value that has passed through a function box, that the function of that thing is to what? Square the value of x minus seven multiplied by x and now add three to it and that is the output so this is a function i can as well write it as y equals x squared minus seven x plus three that is that as for this so that's the brief introduction to the term function so 
it is actually taken out from mapping. So mapping. So when it involves values and bytes, it becomes a function. So mapping is generally for data. So we call them together, like complementary, mapping and function. For those of us that at least part who know something like that before it. Mapping and function. Okay, that's that as per function now. The next thing is to identify a function. How do I know if this is a function? How do I know if this is not a function? For a function, for one value of x, there must always be a value of y. That is a function. Whenever there is a value of x, x means one. Then y must never mean one or two. Like a quadratic equation, no. If it's a function, y must have one value as x is having one value. That is what we call a function. Or else, or otherwise, it is not a function. So to pass the function test now, we call a test the vertical line test. It's because of time. Sorry for writing too fast. So vertical line test. Let's say the, the, the graph of y squared, uh, x squared rather, the graph of x squared, where y is the vertical axis, x is the horizontal axis. I would like you to be familiar with the graphs too, but I'm not coming there now. I want to show you something first. The graph of x squared is like this. This is the, it will pass through the origin here, y axis and x axis. This is the graph of x squared. Now look at this. The vertical line test means this is one, two, three, four. This is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. This is one, two, three. One, two, minus three. When x is one, y has a value. When x is 1.1, trace it here, y adds a value. When x is 1.2, trace it, there will always be a value for y. But when you have x, how many values does y have when x is one value? Just one value, right? But look at this graph. The graph of x equals y squared will occur this way. The graph of x equals y squared will be like this. Okay? Will be like this. Now, look at this. For any value of x, y is going to be having two values. If x is two here, I have to project it upward. y will be equal to four. Project it downward, y will be equal to minus four. You can see why it's having two values. So it has failed the vertical line test. The vertical line test just implies that whenever the vertical line passes through the parabola or any graph that is formed, then it must give just one value for y. It's passing through y in one point, y in one point, y in one point. But here now, once a vertical line is drawn, it must pass through y here and come and pass through y here again. That means it is passing through it in two points. That is the first way of knowing if something is a function or not. But the second way is the simple way because of those that are not familiar with graphs or functions. That you don't know how the graph is going to be, stuff like that. So it's a very simple way. Now look, look at it. They are given a question in the exam that this is something. Is this a function or not? Here it is. It says x squared or x plus 7y equals 9. Is this a function or not? How do I know if this is a function? It's just to say that I must have a value of y for a value of x. That means I must not have y equals to this or this, plus this or minus this. There should be nothing like that. But y equals to 1 straight y equals two straight y equals three then it is a function so now how do we know if y is a function of x now i say let me make y the subject of the formula the first thing is to make y the subject of the formula so that is why i said to some people privately that a prerequisite to understanding function is to know some basic algebra so seven y equals 9 minus x. Seven y equals 9 minus x. What do I do now? I divide both sides by 7. 
So seven cancel seven and seven here. So let me say for any value of x, let me say my x is two. So y equals nine minus two over seven. That is nine minus three is seven divided by seven. So y equals one. Because I got one value for y, that means this thing is a function. And even I'm getting y equals to one or three, then it's not a function. So how do we predict this? Just know. Don't sorry, yourself. sorry. Why, why x is true? Because I'm saying it is two. I chose two. You can choose three. It's up to you to decide. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, look at that one. Too short. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We have to be fast. That's why. We have to be fast. We have a lot to support. So, um, this is now x squared plus y squared equals nine. Sorry. Sorry. Please, is this class speak, recorded? Speak out. Speak out if you are speaking. I have to own here. I'm not close to this. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, can you? Is the class recorded, please? Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Go on, on Ali. Go on, Ali. Go on, Ali. Okay. So x squared plus y squared equals nine. Here now, determine if y is a function of x. My brother, don't stress yourself. As you can see, that y is is raised to the power of two. No. Y is not a function of X because Y is raised to power two. Whenever Y is raised to power two, the graph of Y will be like this. The graph of the function will be like this, of the expression. And you know it's, going, it's not going to pass the vertical line test. Whenever Y is raised to the power of two, know very well that Y is not a function of X. But it might be only X that is raised to power two. X squared plus Y equals zero. Here, y is a function of x. But whenever y is raised, that is the condition. Whenever y is raised to the power of 2, know by yourself that y is not a function of x. Now, tell me the conditions of this text. As we are doing it, I'll be giving the passwords. So it won't become too much on your head and we'll be able to say I get what it. Tell me, please, the nature of this one, x squared, plus y squared equals nine. One over two x minus nine y squared equals zero. X plus y squared equals seven. X squared minus y equals seven. So, number one, you can go through the method we explained, but I will advise you to leave such method and resort to the law I just gave you now, that whenever y is raised to the power of two in the function, Agree and believe yourself that it is not a function. It is not a function. So who has it? The first one. What is the nature of the first one? Is y a function of x here? No, because it's no. raised to the power. So for those of you online, are you getting it too? Yes, we are. So y is not a function of x in this point. This is not a function. This thing you're seeing here. Y is not a function of X here. X could be a function of Y. But Y is not a function of X. That's the essence. <laughs> it's not even anything. It's not even anything function. This is an equation of circle. X squared plus Y squared equals 9. It's an equation of circle. If you fail the horizontal line test, if you fail the vertical line test. So this is not a function of X. It's an equation of a circle. Okay, the next one. 1 over 2X minus 9Y squared equals 0. Is there anyone that can tell me if y is a function of x here? It is it's not, it's not a function. Yeah, I hope everyone is getting it as some people are getting it. So here now, x plus y squared equals 7. I brought it's three different scenarios. x plus y squared equals 7. Is y a function of x? No, no, no. No, no, no. no. And x squared minus y equals 7. Is y a function of x? It's a yes. function. Yes. 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 Very well. So once the question comes out for you in exam, what do you do? Don't solve anything, my sister. Don't stress yourself. I got yeah. Just watch, go for it, and take it once, twice. So, but the only thing that can make you to result in stuff like that is when y is raised to power of three. So we have odd functions. We have even functions. 
for even functions, the graphs are always in form of x squared. For odd functions, the graphs are always in form of x cubed. So the vertical line determines what happens. So that's that as for this. I think I've explained this is a function of this dot. That is what we call identification of function. Now the graphs of functions. Okay, before that, let me mention the types of functions. Then we evaluate functions, find the zeros of functions. Types of functions. There are some few things you need to do to consideration. Never, you might never have thought of them because of I never have thought of them. Is that this thing you are saying every day is even a function, but you don't know it's a function. If I say f of x equals sine x, that means x has undergone the box that is having the sine function inside it, and the output is involving sine x. So this is a trigonometric function. Okay. If the function is given as f of x equals sine x. So definitely you should know that sine x is the function given as right. So x has undergone a function sine. The function is sine. So when x is being imputed into the function. What it gives as an output becomes sine x. Therefore, f of x equals sine x is a function. Y equals sine x is a function. Now it can come out. Now what type of function is it? It is a trigonometric function. You know the trigonometric sine, cosine, cotangent, um, tangent. I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm saying now is the is the, is the, what's it called? The trigonometric functions. Three functions, let me show this like that. The three functions. I have sine x. So sine x is always equal to the opposite of the right angle triangle over the hypotenuse. So we draw by the by a function, cosine x, these are trigonometric functions, is adjacent of the triangle, the adjacent side over hypotenuse, and tangent x is a function to tan x. Tan x is equal to opposite of that over the adjacent. Now, we are living in a right angle triangle. The right angle triangle contains Okay, now, we are excluding a right angle triangle. What we will be working with now is the unit circle. I didn't lock that. I didn't lock it before. Yeah. They have locked it now. From the unit circle, that is where we have. Father Matu, please off your please off your your speaker, Father Matu. Matthew, Ahmed, please off your speech. I don't, I don't take, you might not take them serious. Yeah, they are important too. Yes. It is a trigonometric ratio. It is a trigonometric function. Cosec theta or cosec x is equal to one over. Please, excuse. I did I, I'm not get I did not get you. I did not. So yes. you, you pass to at one. Yes, you pass to one yes, one. That year, maybe maybe it's 30 years ago like that. Yes, I did not get what you were saying. I don't see. I don't understand what you are, you I don't understand this listen, from this, listen, from this part, I don't understand. Listen, please. You are saying it the first time. Listen, let me explain. You are saying you don't understand. Then let me explain. Trigonometric functions have these things: sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, um. Second itself, those are the trigonometric functions, and I'm listing them here. Please just calm down. I said sine x. This is the right angled triangle. Where this is the angle x. 
sin x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. These ones are not so important. I just want you to know that sin x equals to this. It might be out, but it should just be that it's a function, a tri trigonometric function. That's what I want you to note there. Cosine x is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. They, they use one thing now, so catwa. Yeah. So, uh, so tan x equals opposite over adjacent. You are familiar with these things. The ones you might probably not be familiar with, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with them, is cosec x. When we say cosecant, cosecant x means one over sine x. When I say cosec, cosec seven, cosec seven is equal to one over sine seven. Thank you very much. So after cosec, cosec, I have second. That is just sec. So sec x equals to one over cos x. And the next one after sec is cot. That is what we call cotangent. Cot x. You can just write this down. Cot, cot x is one over uh, cotangent x is equal to one over tan x. But x equals one over tan x. So these are trigonometric functions. These are trigonometric functions. So trigonometric functions. The trigonometric functions, what we what with the unit say, this is the unit set. So the trigonometric function work with it. This is how it is. This is the right angle triangle in the unit circle, and everything is derived from it. There are so many identities. The sine square x plus cos square x equals one. One plus tan square x equals sec square x. Sin square x equals to cos two x minus one over two. Sin square x, my, all those functions. Don't let me be disturbing your brain with stuff like that now. So all these are what trigonometric functions. Whenever you see sign, cosine like that, is trigonometric functions. But when you now see the signs having H, I'm talking about that function again now. Sine now is having H. Sine HX. Instead of sine X, they are now saying they might be confusing with you with that. Sine HX. This is a hyperbolic function. So hyperbolic function, sine HX, cos HX. And, yes, and HX, hyperbolic function. We said the trigonometric functions are based on the unit cycle. The hyperbolic functions, they are based on the hyperbola. They are based on the hyperbola. Hey, what's the sign, what's the sign of the hyperbola? I don't know. I can't even remember. It's hyperbola that is coming to my brain <laughs> so of the hyperbola, is it? So the unit say the hyperbola. So the functions of these ones are the hyperbolic functions: sine hx, cos hx, tan hx, cosec hx, cot, cot hx, sec hx. All these are what hyperbolic functions. And we have formulas for them. I don't want to stress you too much. Sine HS is e raised to power x minus e raised to power minus x over 2. Cos HX is e raised to power x plus e raised to power minus x over 2. Tan HX is e raised to power minus x, e raised to power x minus e raised to power minus x over e raised to power x plus e raised to power minus x. Cos HX is 1 over, that is 2 over this. 2 over this. Cotangent x is this over this. So those ones are not so important to you. They are not so important to you. The, yes, because I don't, we are ready for the exam now. It's just unnecessary to provide you with some useless stuff. So we have to take the things that are important. I just want you to note that anyhow, when, whenever you see this stage here, know that it is not a trigonometric. That and HX. That HX is. E raised to power x plus e raised to power minus x over e raised to power x minus e raised to power minus x. 
e raised to power x plus e raised to power minus x over e raised to power x minus e raised to power minus x. This is the time. And then, this is the time, the time. These ones are not important, actually. They are not important. I don't want us to exit time to time. Man. Hello, everyone. Are we together? Whenever you see H with sign, CH with cos, CH with tan, CH with cosine, they are not trigonometric functions. They are hyperbolic functions. Oh. Did I make myself clear? Yes. Okay. So if there are some people that, okay, I think it's still okay. It's still okay. Hyperbolic functions. So all these ones are known as the trans, transdential, the transdential function, the function, the function. Do the transcendental. So, and we have the normal algebraic functions y equals 2x minus 7, 2x squared minus 7x. They are algebraic functions. They are polynomial functions. Uh, algebraic functions. Algebraic functions. <coughs> So algebraic functions are the, no, the ones we are most um, conversant with. They are common. They are common ones. They are also the, the, the ones in common. We have the inverse trigonometric functions as well. When you see arc sine, this is how you write arc sine. Arc sine x, it is not a trigonometric function. Arc sine x is an inverse trigonometric function. Yes, that is the first type of function. Inverse trigonometric function. That is arc sine x. Like you need to identify these things. Then you won't have issues. You know, just going through the material. Yeah. Yes, arc cos x is inverse trigonometric function. Arc cos x. Arc cot x. Arc tan x. Arc set x. They are inverse trigonometric functions. They are not trigonometric functions. Inverse trigonometric functions. In some cases, they write them with arc and x. Like this. Are we making sense? Yes. Yes. Okay, we can stop it there. We still have more types of functions. I think that's what I can remember at the moment. So I think it's still okay like that. Too. So now, evaluating a function. Well, yeah, I can't remember. That's very general. Evaluation of functions. So to evaluate a function, guys, you just mentioned something now. I said, if this is the function box, and what is inside this thing is to multiply whenever, whenever whatever enters it, multiply it. Yeah. I don't say I'm not calling it. Okay, so we said, let this be the function box here. What is inside this function? What, the, what this box does now? The function of this box is to square anything that is being input into it. After squaring it, multiply it by seven and subtract that. Multiply it by seven and subtract that. That's seven X, subtract it and add three to the function. This is it. So. This is just the f of x. Now let us evaluate this thing. What if it is three that enters this box? Then it's going to be f of three. That means I won't be having x, I'll be having three. That means three squared minus seven times three plus three. I'm very sure it is squared. <laughs> Don't go to <till> law. <laughs> yeah, man. So, again, 
I said, if this is the box, the function box, and this is the function that is input that is in this box, this is what it does. It squares anything that is input into it. After squaring it, it subtracts seven times that value and adds three to it. That is what the function box does. When I'm inputting x, this is what I'll have. Now I'm not inputting x, I'm inputting three. Then I'm going to have what replaces x. So f of three becomes three squared minus seven times three plus this three. Exactly. Whenever you have f of x to be something, f of that, another value does replace. So use the replacement theorem. So my f of three is going to be a number. That is why function is different from mapping. 9 minus 21 plus 3. 9. That is f of 3. Okay. I think that's one example is okay. Just one example. So now do, do this three. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. No, is that no, 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 no. <laughs> well, that is the output. Whenever you put three, like that means whenever you put three inside the function box that is arranged that way, then you are going to have nine at the output box. It will solve it for you. Like, okay, okay. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <it's true. laughs> very funny. Okay, look at this. This is the box again. Okay. What is there is that it keeps the value minus. Minus three. So x is the value. So this means it is x that I'm using through the function box. So that means everything here is f of x. So now what is f of two? That means I'm replacing x by two. It is x that it is two that is entering this thing. So is there any cost to be having x outside it? I need just an integer. I need a real number. Since I'm imputing a real number, then I shall have a real a real number outside. That means I'll be replacing my x by two. So 2 cubed minus 9 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 3. Okay? So 2 cubed gives me 8 minus 9 times 2 squared. That is 4 because of people let me move it together. Plus 2 times 2. So 4 just do this one. 8 minus 9 times 4, 36 plus 4 minus 3. So at the end of the day, I'm going to have minus 9. As f of two. That means if I'm imputing two inside this box, I will have minus 19 as my output. Any question before I give the class one? Uh, no man, now you just use your calculator for that. <laughs> it's too far. Okay, see, I, 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 even, I even made a mistake. I even made a mistake. Is it 14? This is 12. This is minus 19. Okay. 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 Are we together? I'm gonna give a class one. So this is how to evaluate a function. Yeah, this is a common question. I solved this for some people. But yeah, many many questions like this. So once you are able to get this now. Why oh, you yeah, encounter it in the exam? Take it that way. 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 I've discovered since I just don't want to say anything again. Um, are we are we together? Shall we just go ahead? See, be using your be with your calculator. Yeah. Yes, I'm used to my brain. I'm doing exam on the calculator. Well, yeah. It's okay, I'll just do I will I will be assuming answers. I'll say let's say the answer is seven because I, I don't have the strength to be completing anything. Let's say the answer is seven. How continue? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's that? <your> <laughs> I think can you move? Chad, did you hear how she said it? Let's move on, please. Please do this. 
No, some of them have said it. Hey, Jim Bacon. Right hand. Okay, let's see. Find f of minus one. What do you find f of minus for this function? Ali, please read it out because the board is not clear. You can't see it. You don't have to play it. Read it out. Seven x cubed minus two x squared plus seven x minus three. Find f of minus one. No matter. As you get cramming what I'm doing. Please, seven x minus what? I'm not seeing very well. Oh. Seven x minus three. Is it that the board is not covering it or what? The board is not covering it or what? The answer is minus 19. Minus 19. Oh, is it minus 19? Ah. Okay. Show us today, show like this. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. Don't let us waste time. Minus 19, are you? No. Yes. The answer is 9, no. Nine. Uh, minus 7, minus 2. Minus 7. Minus 2. <laughs> Minus nineteen. Minus nineteen. Minus nineteen. Very good. No time to check time. Very good. So that means now you can evaluate a function by using integers. Now let's evaluate a function by using a function. Listen carefully, everyone. You are not doing the magic here. F of x equals x cubed minus seven x plus two. Now. F of one equals one cubed minus seven times one plus two. Are we making sense? Now, F of X plus one, that means the function box as I'm using. Now, I'm not imputing X into it anymore. I'm not imputing one into it anymore. I'm imputing X plus one into it. Are we together? Uh, before yeah. I was computing x, I imputed one here now. Yes. I said f of one. So when f of one, when it was f of one, I represented x by one. So now it is f of x plus one. Now what do I do? I represent x by x plus one. See, see, see. X one. X s plus one. X one. X plus one. Is it not so clear? Not really clear. It's clear. Okay, again, for those of you here, in case you didn't get it well, I said f of x is this. So f of anything, I'm just going to use that thing, even if it is a very long polynomial. F of x squared plus l all those things, I'm using it to represent x anywhere I see x. Irrespective of how long it is. That means f of x plus one becomes x plus one cubed. That is, this x plus one is representing x just the way that one represented x. It's no Joe now. One thing, one represented x there. So when it was f of one, it is f of x plus one term now. Then it should represent x minus seven times instead of x, x plus one. So what, you are understanding it faster. So you guys understand it faster as well, please. So plus two. 
We are evaluating a function here. I hope things that you don't understand don't come out of the exam. See, that is what you have now. You are going to expand this one on its own. See, you will never encounter a pressure like this. I will know. Before you will be lost when, when expanding. Expand x by x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 1. X plus 1 cubed. That is the meaning. X plus 1 cubed. Why are you carrying stupid pressure? Come on, say. <laughs> oh, so now, don't worry, you understand it. Just x plus 1 times x plus 1. You do that first. After getting the answer, multiply it by x plus 1. How do you do this? x times x. That is x squared. x times 1. That is x. 1 times x. That is x. 1 times 1. So I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now multiply down by x plus 1 again. See, you will not encounter a question like this. It's becoming too long. Don't worry. It's becoming too long. It's going to waste my time. So finish it. Finish it. Who, who knows, self? My cuckoo see. We haven't gotten to anywhere. We are still evaluating it. I'll soon jump. I'll soon jump to calculus after taking this exam. I'll soon jump. Because we've taken classes on, on, the, on this evaluation of functions before. We've taken much classes on functions. So I'll soon jump to calculus. I'll treat the rules of calculus and how to integrate. Those are the general things. Yeah? There's no way those ones will not come out. I want you to understand that. Okay. Don't tell me I'm giving you. F of x is the function s squared plus one. Let yeah, me down. Find find x plus one. Find f of x plus one. That's going to be re re represent x plus one. That is replace it by replace x by x plus 1. So squared plus this one that is here. That becomes x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus this one that is here. So that is x squared plus 2x plus 2. That means when it is f of x plus 1 that you impute into the function that is like this. This is what you are going to have. So now, I'm going to give a walk, a simple walk. A very simple one. The, the way that it might possibly come out in the exam. F of x equals 2x minus 3. Find f of x plus 1. If you can't do this, I will find you. Two x minus one. Two x minus one. Two x minus one. Let me see this online, people. Two x minus one. Two x minus one. Okay, you don't like to issue. 
I want to be sure. Okay. I said, sure, no, be here. Let me be sure. Okay. So, successfully, we were able to compute that. Forget about evaluation of functions now. Let us look at the inverse. No, I'm not doing inverse of the function. That's why you lose pressure to kill. And, you know, there are some certain things that when you start asking, asking questions, time will go into function f of x. I'm doing the inverse of the function now. I have told you several times that the inverse of the function has just some steps. Measure the first steps and go ahead. F of x equals to 2x minus 3. Find f inverse of x. So, f of x, the first thing is to represent this f of x, change it to y straight away. Change this thing to y. That's the first step. Change f of x to y. Then equate it to 2x minus 3. We've done the first step. Uh, now, uh, f of x, change it to y. Change. You can write this step down. This is the step to solve any inverse, to find any inverse. Change f of x to y first. Well, I have numerous methods to solve there. How do I buy you? Y equals 2x minus 3. So after changing f of x to y, the next thing is to interchange x and y. Where you see x, write y. Where you see y, write x. Interchange x and y means this y now, change it to x. This x, change it to y minus 3. Are we making sense? We just interchanged x and y. When I have y, I change it to x. When I have x, I change it to y. Looking for the inverse of the function. Now, the next function is to, the next step is to make y the subject. Make y the subject of the function. Okay. That's 5 over 2 plus 1. So now, making y the subject of the formula, bring minus 3 from this place to this place. I'll have x plus 3 equals 2y, right? I have to ask the question. What's that? X plus 3 is 2. Oh, So, just come back this. x plus 3 equals 2y. Now, divide both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 2 because it is the coefficient of y. So 2 cancels 2 here, 2 here. I can write it very well now that y equals x plus 3. X plus 3 over 2. So that means I've gotten the function, the inverse of the function f, x, f of x is going to be x plus 3 over 2. I just changed the y back to f, of f inverse of x. I'll do one more example. I changed, I changed y back to f of x. You know it was from f of x, but I changed it to x. What is the meaning of inverse? Look at it. What is the meaning of inverse? The meaning of inverse is this is the function box. When I have x here, once it passes through this box to this place, it gives sign x. If sin x was the thing I'm putting inside, I will get x. So the inverse of this sin x will be x. That is the minimum. That is the minimum. It's just that there's no time. If it was valid, it's no time to explain all this stops. Are we together? Are we together? Now look at another function, f of x equals x minus 7. That's not too simple. I'm coming. That's too simple. Please wait. 2x minus 3 over x plus 2. So now, after this, all the TMA screenshots that are sending up and down, 
They should help you to do. Please try to solve them now after these lectures. F of x equals to 2x minus 3 over x plus 2. Find F inverse of x. The first step, change this thing to y. y equals 2x minus 3 over x plus 2. The next step, interchange y and x. This means this one has changed to x. This one has changed to y. 2y minus 3 over y plus 2. I changed y to x. Look at hello everyone. The people that are here, they are solving it as I'm solving. So you two should be doing something like that, please. It's going to show your understanding of the topic. Now, what do I do? Cross multiply or multiply through by this else here. I'm going to have x times y plus 2 equals 2y minus 2. That is what I have. Now, expand this bracket. That is x times y. That is xy. x times 2. That is plus 2x. Equals to 2y minus 2. Now, I'm making y this one. This is xy. This is 2y. I'm bringing them to one side. Bring xy and 2y to one side. Since I'm making y the subject of the formula, that means I'm collecting like terms. So xy minus 2y is equal to this minus 2 minus 2x. Yes. So y is common here. I can bring y out. Y is common. I will have x minus 2 left. Y is common. Bring it out. So x minus 2. I will have this thing. Equals to 3 minus 2x. Minus 3 minus 2x. Now I can divide both sides by x minus 2. So x minus 2 minus x minus 2. And x minus 2 there. So f inverse of x is equal to minus 3 minus 2x all over x minus 2. Please, I'll do the go through it yourself. Go through the steps. The first step is to change f of x to y. The next step is to interchange y and x. Look at this y and change it to x. Look at this x and change it to y. So make y equal to minus three one. This plus two one. Minus zero. This one. Please go through it in a minute. I'll give the class on that. Please, I can't see the last part though. I don't know if there's a way they can shift the the phone a little. No saying it. It is minus three minus two x over x minus two. Yes. Please, you guys should move the mic. Okay, solve this. This is f of x. This is number one. f of x equals 2 minus 3. Find f inverse of x. Number two is eh, 2 minus 3. 2x minus 9. Number two is f of x is 
3 over 2, 3x minus 7 over 2. Find f inverse of x. Let's see, guys. Go ahead. These are the questions. Write them down, please. I want to turn up. You don't finish them. Yes, yeah, so this one starts. This one shall be fast too. Guys, so find the inverse of the functions here. I read the inverse is me. The thing in green or like this. See the best condition. Please, is that three x minus seven over two x? Yes, it is. Okay. The first one is there. Uh, yes. 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 Minus x minus 9 over 2. Please go again. Try it again. X plus 9 over 2 is equal to y. Is equal to f of x. That your y at the last stage. That your y must be changed back to f inverse of x. Number 1 is f inverse of x is equal to x plus 9 over 2. Yes. One one is 2x plus 7 over 3. Over 3. you repeat that? Miss, Miss Destiny, Mrs. Destiny. Sir. Mrs. Destiny, listen to him. He didn't say y equals x plus 9 over 2. He said f inverse of x in case. That's why you're asked to look for the inverse of the function f of x. So that's oh, f okay. inverse of x. Okay, so okay. that is why I'm saying you're not correct. That's just the mistake you made. All right. And the second one will go. 2x plus 7 over 3. How do you say minus 7? Can you hear me? 2x plus 7 over 3. You are correct. Good. Okay. That was it. Do you wrote? Everything is fine. Thank you. I'm going to go. Go. Prodigy, please tell me. Is this thing stable? Should she go by? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, no, Thank God, my people here have known inverse very well. What about those of you online? Hope you've understood the inverse of the function. We are good, we are good. Okay, let's go. Sorry, I won't take the function more than that. Okay, the prerequisites. We have, sorry, the revision. We have a function to be. Anything that gives another value by passing through a particular state. The state might be taking a particular work on it. That work is what we call function. I described it using a desktop um, value, desktop pattern, desktop pattern. So I said this could be the function box, and the function that is going to be executing on that particular value will be inside this thing. So and we'll be having our output value. 
So we have types of functions, we have the trigonometric functions, we have all those things. Sine x is a trigonometric function, cosine x, cotangent x, tangent x, co um, cosecant x, secant x. They are all trigonometric functions. They are derived from the unit cycle. Why sine hx? Whenever you see the h, the h here means it is an hyperbola. It is not gotten from the unit cycle. Sine H S. This is different from sine X. Yeah, let's make the difference like this. There are three different types of functions. Sine H X is a hyperbolic function. Why sine X is a trigonometric function? And at sine X is an inverse trigonometric function. We have logarithmic function too. One of the ones I forgot to say. So we have exponential functions. Exponential function is said that f of x equals a raised to power x, a value raised to power of x. So a logarithmic function is f of x equals log a is x. So this is a logarithmic function. This is the exponential function. This is a hyperbolic function, a trigonometric function. Right. And inverse trigonometric function, and this is a polynomial or algebraic function f of x equals x squared plus 3x and the like. So, this is the polynomial function. We've mentioned all this before, actually, just very few. Okay. So, we are done with function. Let me tell you this trigonometric function. Trigonometric is nothing for this. So So this is the angle. The other thing is that all those things are cutting from the sign. The sign. Everything is cutting from the sign. Why are they cutting from the sign? Why are they cutting from the sign? So this is the angle. This is the angle. Did you understand the second one? Sorry. This one? Yes. Okay. This is how you get a video. You see, you know they know they might crush with that. They do that see you. No, she's not the one. She's not the one. She's not the one. She's not the one. But this might be your new crush, Tusha. I'm not the one. I've had you. 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 I've had he said, he, he, okay. he said he can come like this, can come like this as well. I have a body function. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, less important than all the words. I just decided to do it. Yeah, yes, it is. Hey, hey, hey. I think I'm going to so, okay, you know, that's okay. Yeah, 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 I'm going to give you some hints. So people don't know how to answer now questions. That's why many people are having bad answers. You will know the answer, but you will still get it wrong. You now believe now. That's the. You will be mad now. You know how to answer the question. Now I have to say capital letter. So small letter. You are scared of how you know how to answer the question. So far you cannot enter capital letter as capital letter. So what you enter small letter? You have to enter capital letter. Capital letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why those guys, when I told them that they come to them, and they ask, this is the answer. You know, when I want to help someone, I'll help him deal with it, and they would have brought help and permission. So I had to tell them they start to attack. But that was the reason I had to understand this question. Unless the way you can get it from you, but it's for smaller. Unless it's just me. You should think you never have one.
Okay, guys, let's talk about the limits. Limit, 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 limit your next. Okay, limit now. Uh, limit it. So we are, we are going to limit that. I won't be spending much on it actually too, because I've explained so much of it. Because of that, I'm taking an example straight from the past. Ah, limit X to five. Don't worry. As far, as I'm taking the example, I'll be I'll be mentioning the theorems, the theorems of limits. Don't worry. That will be the first method. Spanish and Marsha, I will limit. I've explained that it is inside some of the video recordings. Yes, I'm very sure. We explained it in that. That's very much a good exam. For now, I think you can be. So, there are, you know, are very important for the exam. So, this one, <laughs> people are already understanding how they are ready for exam new. So, let's say I'm limiting X to 5. That means I'm limiting the function I'm going to write now. Let's say to X squared minus 5. As S approach, approaches 5, as X approaches 5. So here is what I'm limiting as x approaches 5. Find the limit of 2x squared minus 5 as x approaches 5. This is just like replacement theorem. That is the first theorem. Listen. The replacement theorem means you are replacing x by that which you are limiting it to. That means you are replacing x by 5. That is 2 times 5 squared. So the next thing is now the addition theorem. The addition of the limit, the limit of sum, I have some theorem. The limit of sum is equal to sum of limits. That means the limit of difference is equal to difference of limits. This one now means limit of x of 2x squared minus 5 as x approaches 5 is equal to limit x to 5 of 2x squared minus limit x to 5 or 5. This is the difference theorem. Look at what just happened. This, do you not see that it's just normal thing? I just distributed. There is one of the rules of binary operation. Call it the, the distributive law. Look at it. I just distributed limit to 2x squared. I distributed it to minus, to minus 5. So if it was plus 2, it would just be like this. If it was multiplication, it's still the same thing. Division, it's still the same thing. That's why limit is very simple. These are the so called theorems of limit. They are not hard theorems. They are just simple stops. Wait, let's do this one first. So you can break it down. It is theory. For OBJ, nobody wants to see all this rubbish. Just put it 2 times 5 squared minus 5. Finish. So let's do this now. Limit 2x squared as x approaches 5. That's going to be 2 times. I'm going to replace x by 5. Just when I was evaluating functions. Yes. Yes, it is okay. And we solve the answer all the So therefore, 5 is Let's see. So 2 times 5. Squared. Okay, I'm using minus because of what is there. So minus limit of five. Limit yeah, that's another theoretical limit. Limit of a variable less y. Hey. Okay, okay, okay. What do we call something like this? Limit of an integer is the same as an integer. Limit of an integer is that integer. Limit of five is five. Because it does not have x, it does not have any variable. That is the meaning. Limit of three is three. Even if I'm limiting it to one million, it's still three. Because there is no way I'm going to replace an x with that one. So limit of an integer, limit of an integer is the same as that. I think that is about four theorems now. We said difference, limit of difference is difference of limits, difference of the two limits, limit of sum. Is sum of the limit. Limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limit. That means division. Limit of a product is the product of the limit. And limit of an integer is the integer itself. So this is 2 times 25 
minus five plus cos five. Look, so please go through this. I'm going to give one more example. A class one. Please, oh, Ali, how is uh, 2 times uh, 25 minus 5, 45? It's 95. Not 2 times 5 is no, no. 2, 25. No, 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 it's only at 35. That was a mistake. Smoker. I mean, I know it's you. But if you go there. Shall we continue? Okay, sir. No time to check time, no time. No time to check time, no be added. No time to check time. Okay, guys. Let's let's take this set of one. Um, limit x to two. We have left side limit and right side limit. Limit x to two for f of x. The question will come this way. Limit f of m, x to two for f of x. We have f of x equals x squared minus two. What do you do? Come here and say limit x to 2 for x squared minus 2. Finish. So By using x squared minus 2, you are using This is the question. Yeah. This question. is the question, yes. Now I want to solve it. You just use x squared minus 2 to represent f of x. Normally, since they said f of x equals x squared minus 2. And the next thing is to use the replacement theorem. If you like, you can use the difference theorem. Use less thing. Minus two. So that means the limit of this goes to cos of x. No, it's not going to be hard. I'm sure you know. Just what? Hello, everyone. As you are going through your material, why you I'll touch everything in your material. Don't worry. You won't have a question that you are able to solve. You'll be unable to solve unless you don't understand it in this class. But say with not touch. So f of x equals to two squared is four minus two. That is two. Ah, yeah. so ask to someone. I'm going to be. 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 I
So let's take a class up on this one. Yes, sir. That will be why they are class. Look at it. Two x two minus seven x seven plus nine. They are all going to be harder than this. I don't think. Just I will do it. Yes. You can. I'm very sure. Did you get? One thirty four. Let's see. Stand down, stand down, stand down. Ah, last time. Yeah, I'm back inside. So it's been inside, inside, not in the bike. Minus 91. What do you get to? Minus 91. Minus 10. 35 times 10. No, it cannot be minus, bro. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. What are you, 91? Do you get to? No, 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 no. Eighty-four. Come on, boy. I mean, eighty-four. Eighty-four. Forty-one. 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 How is it forty-one? Yeah, is right. It's eighty four. What is the bro? Eighty four, eighty four. Eighty four. This age Yes, you are confused. I always advise you, you are confused. You should have Nobody sitting here is now. Okay, let's try. Okay, that's good. We've done that of normal replacement. There are several ways. Limit. Uh, the answer is going to be like this. Limit x to pi of that function that we just put now. That was. No, 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 no. X two. Yes. Any loss? Loss? Loss. So the answer is going to be like this. Equals to 
Okay. This is how you present your answer. This is how you present your answer. This is how you present your answer. Please, Ali. Hello, Ali. Yes. Those filling the gaps that is always in the exam and this thing, is this the way we are going to input the answer? They, if they give you the question like this, you just input 84 as the answer. Finish. Don't write all this. Okay. Yeah. All right. Input 84 as the answer. That's just replacement. There is factor, factor method. Let us do the factor method now. Hey, I hope you guys understand the limit x to 2 or x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Okay. You can't use replacement method here. Yeah. But somebody is telling me he wants to try to do replacement method. Yeah, exactly. You'll be left with infinity. <laughs> undefined. The answer will be undefined. Because if you are using the replacement theorem now, you have anything you have divided by zero. Note that the anything over zero is error undefined. Error undefined. Anything over zero. If you write over zero, you're going to pass error. So, what do you do in this case? Factorization method. That is why you use your factorization method. There are some certain things we've passed through in algebraic. It is. If X was thrown out, everything would be okay. Okay, that's it. If X was three, everything would be okay. But in this case now, nothing is okay. So X is two. So now, what do you do? You can't just say two squared minus four. Replacement theorem over two minus two. This is giving you zero over zero. We call this thing indeterminacy. So it's impossible. It even still makes sense here. Yeah. It still makes sense here. Yeah. In some cases, we'll use the, I hope we're able to touch it in computer theory. Let's just do this one first. So what do you do here? This is a square. Four is a square. So be familiar with it. Just be familiar with it in this case. This is all what difference of two squares. This is a square. This is another square. Minus means difference. Difference of two squares. So if a squared and b squared are separated by the operator minus, then we have it to be a plus b times a minus b. This is the law of difference of squares. Just know it. That means we are going to have x plus four times x plus two and times x minus two. Square root of four is two. Square root of x is x. Please just note this thing here. Write everything here. X plus A plus A plus A square minus B. Once you note this thing, you won't be having issues because I believe stuff, stuff like this will come out of So, as the case is now, this is the difference of squares. I'm rubbing it up because of the denominator here. Now, look at it. This is when it will be possible for me to do my work. All over x minus 2. This is what we call the factor theorem. I'm not using the replacement theorem first. I'm using the factor theorem. I factorized x squared minus 4. I factorized it to x plus 2 times x minus 2. So x minus 2 cancels x minus 2. Please look at the bottom. x minus 2 cancels x minus 2. I'm not looking at what I'm doing. Don't be lost, please. Mr. Kaka. x minus 2 cancels x minus 2. So I'm left with x plus 2. The limit still stands as limit. Limit x. So this is what I'm left with. I can say this thing like this is equal to this. Now let us use the replacement theorem to do the limit. That would be 2 plus 2. 
That was why I was calling you. Listen again. Here now, everything we add here, we simplified it by using the factors here to give us this. So after getting this, we have x plus 2 alone remaining. So at this limit, x to 2 is still there. It's very useful because we need an answer. We need to get an answer, a figure, a number. So limit x as it approaches to here. That will be 2. Replace it by using the replacement value. That will be 2 plus 2. That is giving us Therefore, limit x to 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 is 4. If you use the replacement theorem straight away, you get zero. But I assure you, you will encounter questions like this. I'll take one more. Please, online people. Are you are you are we together? Yes, we are. Yeah, okay. together we are. Yes. Now they use my language. Tell me that. That's it. Don't get the same Yeah, yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Is it clear? Clear. Are you going? I saw it in one of the schools I used to teach. <laughs> the principal was like, <laughs> the principal was like, which kind of teacher? The principal was bad with that, eh? What do you say? Like, you thought I was saying something meaningful. I said, no, I said, we have to make Okay, the last one of this uh, before giving the classroom. Mm -hmm. Again, be familiar with the difference of squares. I hope it's just like that. Limit x to 1 and have x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. This is going to be 1 is the square of 1 and x squared is the square of x. So the operation there, operator there is minus. That means this is a difference of two squares. I can say x squared minus 1 is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 1. So let me do the work. x squared minus 1 is going to be x plus 1 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. Why am I not replacing it straight away? Because I will have something all over 0, and that is a big problem. It's a big problem. Yeah, did you understand this one? See, x squared minus 1 is still the same thing as the difference of two squares we just did earlier. x squared is a square. 1 is a square. 1 is the square of 1, right? So x squared minus 1 is difference of square. So the answer is going to be x plus 1 times x minus 1. Know this rule. This is a rule. Okay, Know okay. Rule. I didn't see this square. I understand. Thank you. So, uh, uh, I'm going to this. So, now we have this now all over x minus 1. It's going to give us limit x to 1 of what? x plus 1. Because it is x plus 1 we are left with. So, that's going to be 1 plus 1. That gives 2. So that means this value all together limiting x and approaches one is giving us two. Last one. So really remember that you want the last one. Yes, we took on that equation. Yeah. We took on that equation last semester. So don't tell, don't ask me how to don't ask me how to factorize you. Or else I will not take it. So yeah. Don't ask me how to factorize for that equation. I don't know. You join this semester. I'm not doing that. You can do that. I don't know. Conduct it. You know Okay, guys. Do this. Hmm. Let me have a look. So, can you be 
So I want us to do it together. Let's solve it's it together. That's minus one. Okay, it's an example actually. Let's do it together. Okay. Mm, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's solve it together, guys. Like, you didn't know about it before. You couldn't solve uh, this um, equation. You couldn't, you couldn't expand this bracket. Sorry, you couldn't factorize this function. Listen, to factorize x squared minus 5x plus 6 means you are factorizing a quadratic expression. How do you go with it? You need two numbers that you add them together to give you minus 5. You multiply them together to give you 6. So you're thinking it will depend on the way of your own reasoning. How fast are you good in reasoning in mathematics in your mathematics in your? So it doesn't mean in normal life, but in your reasoning in mathematics. You need two numbers. I say it's going to be minus three and minus two. Minus three plus minus two is giving me minus five. Minus three times minus two is giving me plus six. So I've gotten my two numbers. What do I do? X squared minus three X minus 2x plus 6. I use the two numbers to represent minus 5x. Yeah. Instead of writing this minus 5x now, I'm using the two numbers. Now, I'll group everything. I grouped it. I'm leaving my sign out. Also for this people. So, what is common here? x. Bring the x out. I'm having what? Left. x minus 3. What's common here? 2. The minus is there. 2. What's that? So x minus three as well. What is in this bracket must be exactly the same as what is in this bracket. So x minus x minus three. That means you are taking this x minus two and taking one of the x minus three brackets 
I will implore you if you didn't know quadratic equation before, write it down. Go and digest it later. There are no, there are no way these things will not come out of the exam. No matter, I'm really. They are, they, are, they are going to come out. We are going to do 70 questions. 100 questions. So how come you are not studying stuff like this? You are going to encounter them. Sure. Talk about the Billy Wagner everyone. Thank you, Chat So please, it is very important to know this thing. Don't say what practice. You understand? I wish you the best. So we've gotten our factors. Then I can come and represent this by x minus 2 and x minus 3. That is what Prodigy did. He could know it. Let me know you can know it as well. x minus 2 cancels x minus 2. You have x minus 3 left. And you limit x to 2. Limit x to 2. That means you are replacing x by 2. 2 minus 3. That is minus 1. This is how they got their minus 1. Minus 1. This x, which is 2, limit x to 2. Minus three, that is minus one. It's not a big deal. Please. Sign. The one I guys. The one I guys. The one I Okay. Guys, you are going to try this three questions. Don't fall, please. The exam is coming next tomorrow. Ask me before you One more question. Yeah. Number one, who's singing? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> So guys, this is the first work. Number two is you are going to expand this as well. You are going to factorize it. Number two is limit x to three four x x squared minus i. Okay, let's make it more complex. Limit x to eight. Limit x to twenty five. For x squared minus six two. Okay, limit x to minus seven. And uh, I live in the Okay, I don't Try this, guys. Please, I'm not seeing the board though. If you Please can read, read it out. out though. I cannot see you. Please write them out now. Write them out this way. I'm holding it with my hand. I'm going to find something to rub the board off better. Number two, number two question. 
Viva Sir Chiskos. So, hope you have a note, you're writing all these things in. Later, then you go through them. Ah, ah, I think they didn't come. We are going to stop limit here. I'll take one more, and you stop limit. I'll take one more, and you stop limit. The third one is X is minus seven, right? Domain, codomain, range, and the like. That's my this thing again. I hope Mazi could touch those things. I'll, I'll draw one thing and I'll come back up there. What did you, what do you get as your first answer? Is there anyone getting one here? I've got to number one and number two. What did you number get, sir? Number one is one. The answer is one. Number two is uh, 50. Number two is 50. Yeah, one. Number two is 50. Yes, number How two is, is number 50. Two? I'm sorry. Number two is 50. I, I okay. did X plus 25 into bracket X minus 25. All over Very X good. minus 25. Very good. Number you know that means that? What is it? Number three. Yeah, it's right. Okay. What about your number two? What about yours, Mr. Akan? Uh, ah, no, what's that? No, 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 please. Try them here. Yeah, what's that sign? Are you coming here for just like that? Yeah, you don't come here last one now. Please try it now. Maybe you will ask if you don't understand. Oh, you must understand this. Why you can't come here then? Now just come and write assignment. So, everyone, number three, you will be able to get a good answer. You know, I'm sure. Number one, exactly. number one. The factor. Zeros minus seven. We are coming back to it when we enter the Peter's theorem. They are going to solve it. There is, no, there is nothing that there is no limit. Using eight. Number three minus nine. Eh? Okay. 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 If you this thing, you cannot solve it unless seven, you x minus seven and x minus. Yeah. 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 I think I just need to solve. I don't get an answer now. Keep it. Let us enter that thing. Don't let us waste our time. Yes, now. Be minus nine. Prodigy, yeah. don't pull my leg. Prodigy, don't pull my leg. I need this. Show you use the bit of You cannot get my answer. Six. The answer of this one is going to be six. If you got six, you are correct. If you didn't get six, it's supposed to be Use love it and still later. Let's rub it up. Don't forget, you can write it down somewhere. Let's take differentiation and take love it still. You can't do the love it without making differentiation. Sorry for that. These are making sense. So just try your best. And pray. Pray for love. Be well. Be well. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yes, yeah, showing. Okay, now the last form I'm going to explain in limits. Limit x to zero. <laughs> Very funny. Man. This is a question. Limit x to two. Modulus of two x. All over x. Limit x to two. Modulus of two x all over x. I can even limit x to zero. Please look at this very well. It's still limits now. I'm talking of modulus. This value means modulus. Please, I'm not seeing. Yes. Listen carefully. This is a question. I assure you that you will encounter something like this. Hundred question. I'm best now. So, I'm assuring you that it's a normal thing. There are some normal things we'll be able to predict it. So, okay. See, guys, limit x to zero for this. The other side is not working. We'll charge later. Yes, that's what I said. Listen, guys, please. It will charge. If it's not charging, ah, your voice will, will, will shake me. Okay, so the modulus of 2x over x, what do we do now? The first thing is to find the left side limit and find the right side limit. Those are the two things we need to know. Please listen. We need to know the left side limit and the right side limit. See, don't be confused. This is a very simple work I'm doing. Two x for x is greater than zero. Two x for x is less than zero. That means the left side limit is going to be like this. Go solve anything. Very simple. Minus two x. That means the left side limit over x. I've removed the modulus sign. The right side limit two x over x limit x to zero. Limit x to zero. I said the left side limit will be minus. Left side limit means just change this to minus. This is like for the right side limit, x is greater than zero. Left side limit, x is less than zero. Minus two is less than zero. Eh? And, my, and plus two is greater than zero. This is representing the right side limit. This is representing the left, left side limit. So x cancels x, right? X cancels x. As simple as this one. So limit x to zero for this one. Left side limit means I'm going to put minus on top of the zero. Plus on top of the zero, the right side limit. So minus two, limit x to zero of minus two. You said the theorem now that the limit of, it, of an integer is going to be an integer. The answer here is minus two. Limit x to zero to the right of two. The answer is going to be two. Since the left side limit is minus two, the right side limit is two. Then left side limit is not equal to right side limit. Therefore, the limit does not exist. Because left side limit is not equal to right side limit. And even they are both equal to each other. Then the that answer will be the limit. For now, the limit will not exist. Because If something like this comes out, this is what you need. Yeah. 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 They will give you now, it will be, become an assumption, and it is not option. Just write the answer, the limit does not exist. Yes, it only happens when you see this modulus and when you encounter something. Now it's there actually, because of time. It's there. I did it in one of the videos. Like having 0.9, 0.99, zero point nine nine, zero point nine nine, zero that two point one, two point zero one, two point zero zero one. You need to suppose infinity, negative infinity. It is the same. It's not the same here. So those that are here will remember. So that's not so important. So for stuff like this, I'm sure stuff like this will come. Stuff like this. And this is not long ago. Maybe it's because I'm doing it. I'll take another example. I 
And after the exam, we pass on. Leave it, no. That's what we need to do. Modulus of the modulus. Modulus of the modulus. Shall we go ahead? Those of you here, are you getting it? I'm giving an example more, just one more. So you have the opportunity to go through this now, and I'll give you a new example. I'm going to think about it. <laughs> Okay. For some people, they will do this now. And some people will do them together. I just hope everyone understands. This is the question. Limit x to 2 for the modulus of 3x squared divided by x. Don't let me make things complex. Don't do that. This one is not something. Just draw your finger. Do like this. The left side limit. The right side limit. Left side limit. Do it this way. Limit x to 2 minus left side limit. 2 minus. 2 raised to power minus. Because it is left side limit. And write this function as negative. Minus 3x squared all over x. Because it is left side limit. Now write right side limit. Limit x to 2 plus. Then 3x squared over x. That is the meaning of modulus. Modulus contains minus and plus inside it. That's it. It has plus or minus inside it. That's the essence of modulus. Question. They will ask you that to find the limit. They will say find the limit. They can even say if it exists. They will, they, will, they, will, they will give you, they always give you this thing now as if I'm going to something. But when you're finding it, end up finding it. Well, after getting two answers, are they the same? If they are the same, that means it is still one answer. If they are not the same, it doesn't have the limit. That's the limit. The limit does not exist. Right? The limit does not exist. If they are the same answer. If they are not the same answer. But well, if they are the same answer, that answer, that, it's not the limit that you write it. Write that answer if they are the same. That answer I'm going to get. Okay. Going to get that. This one is true. This one is true. Yeah, but the limit is true. But if the, this one is true, this one is minus two. They are different. The limit does not exist. Okay. So this is what we are doing again. Because this is the last time I will explain something like this. Limit 3x squared, the modulus of 3x squared over x as x approaches 2. So we say the left side limit here, the right side limit here. Left side limit means limit as it goes negatively, left side limit, as it approaches 2 from the left. That is the meaning here. As it approaches 2 from the left. The meaning here is right side limit. As it approaches 2 from the right, 2.1, 2.01. 2.001, 2.0001, is going to keep approaching to the point. So, for the negative now, because it is modulus, this is because it is modulus, so minus 3x squared, I'm using that for left side limit. For right side limit, I'll be using plus 3x squared. 
the modulus contains plus and minus in itself. So x what uh, x cancels squared, x cancels squared. What do I have left? I have the limit x two minus x to two minus minus three x, right? Limit x to two plus three x. So let's do that now. I'm going to have minus three times two. This two. I'm not using minus two. This minus is only, the, is only denoting that it is left side limit. And this is three times two. It gives me plus six. This gives me minus six. Since they are not equal to each other, the limit does not exist. Any question from online, please? Any question? Please. Any question? Yes, yes. Please, I want to ask. What of a situation whereby at the at the left side we have fourteen and at the right side we have three? What will be uh, what will be the answer to the okay. equation? The, answer that we have to the, limit. the limit does not exist since they are not the same. Okay. Do you get okay. It? Sorry, I have it. I'm forming this question from my head. I don't know why it's not so convenient for me to form something that I'm going to have the same value that will say this is the limit. But in that essay, in that case, let me just assume I have six here and I have six here. Let's assume that my answer here at the left side limit is six. Okay. It's possible for polygonal. Very possible for polygonal. Please, I have a question though. I'm coming. I'm coming. It's very possible for normal polynomials. For normal polynomials as x squared minus 3x plus 2. Limit x to 2. The left side limit is the same as the right side limit. Because this one doesn't have the modulus. Normal polynomial is very possible. Your left side limit will be equal to the right side limit. But in this case, it's now the limit of the left side will be different from the limit of the right side. Which, if the question is like this, and it's like this, what I'm going to write when I'm filling the gap is the limit does not exist. And I'm going to write it this way. Start with this, and the limit does not exist. That's how I'm going to write my answer. And if the space was given, if the gap was given, they will give me the answer is minus six. If it was OBJ, the answer is six. The answer is plus or minus six, and say the limit does not exist. And I will choose the limit does not exist. Am I making sense? Yeah. Please, what the question misses? Okay, I wanted to ask. Does it mean that when we see any question that has modulus, must we maybe simplify it to know whether it exists or must, not? Must. You must. You must, yeah. you must. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because I remember in one of your classes, you said and anything that has modulus cannot be factorized, so it does not exist. Ah, uh, you know, Ms. Zedo, <laughs> I do not say it can be factorized. Moreover, if it is factorization, it can be factorized normally. But a modulus here, yeah, modulus like this, contains plus and minus. So I'll take it to the left limit side, left side limit and the right side limit. Though if it if it's in factorization wise, it can be factorized. But you can watch that thing again and get what I mean, really meant there. So it will be split into this way. I once did something like this before, and I used another method. This is just simpler. That is why I'm explaining it this way. It is very simple to explain this way. The method origin you should remember very well. The method so please, what is this method called? Ah. Hello. Shall I say that one method? Hello, neighbor. I beg. Now, to break, I mean, to. When they say one is the method, you say it's breaking is into limits, left side limit and right side limit. And the name of the method is that. <laughs> yes, because I think even in Nigeria, they just put the uh, left side. Please, let me touch on again. Yeah. Any question again? Okay. Yes. Okay, question please. Number one. Limit x for two or two s cubed over x squared. Limit That's x right. to minus one or three x squared over x. Please try this guys. Oh, let me see. 
Yeah. Yes, let's do this one. Is it um, X square? X squared. And the second one is the loss of X minus one over X. Okay, thank you. Find the limit. Yeah, some got the limit. Minus one plus four. How the how would the answer be minus four plus four? Uh -huh. and I'm not sure if you are correct. I don't know if you are correct or not. But the limit does not exist. The limit exists, and that would be the answer. We are not solving anything. If I encounter it, I think that is so. Yeah, so number two, number three. So we are not doing. Now the same you said, there is a point of number two. So it's not number two, number three. Uh, is we class one be the same as the other? Is the exam the same as the other? Please, I'm going to the questions down. I want to put the phone down because I will be messaging. Yeah. Mr. I can understand it, Jerry. What limit does not exist to? She number one, bro, did you? Boot. Ah, ah, boot. I don't know of number two. Okay. If you give number two, we give you minus two and two. Number one, minus four. Okay. Please, another person there. What did you understand? The number one does not exist. The limit does not exist. Number two, I don't really understand. Uh, number two, you should understand now. Plus, plus x minus one and minus x minus one. Minus will be before your bracket. Try it. No exist, I guess. No. Both of them does not exist. That's, that's not the answer. The answer is the limit does not exist. Yeah. I can't see the board again. No, it's only me. I'm reading the question out now. It's only you. I'm not seeing. Like, okay. Some people have answered the question. Some people have solved it. So try to do it over there. I might do the second one for you guys. And after that, I enter calculus. The second one does not exist. It exists, John. Don't be in the other one. It exists to. Where you want to see her? You want to steal her? <laughs> At least you want to kill her. Number two, the limit of. Does not exist. 
Surely, how can we know if it is existing or it is not? If it's existing, then the left. If it is existing, then the left side limit will be equal to the right side limit, and that will be the answer, the value of the limit. But if it is not existing, the left side limit will be different from the right side limit. I'm going to explain the second one. Okay, thank you. That means the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. Okay, guys, left side limit and right side limit. Please look at the board. Left side limit. I just take it from the phone, please. I don't know. Left is it up? Yes, you can see. Okay. The limit is Sorry, Ali. 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 Sorry. Yes. Can we try and limit that number two to one? It is limited to minus one. I do like limit limit to okay, let me check like this. But it will just be. Let me do this one first. I will now change the file value for people that are not as good. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Limit the left side limit now. How are we going to do it? You say this thing becomes negative for left side limit. That's minus x minus one over x limit x to minus one minus left, left side limit. And this is limit x to minus one plus. That's x minus one over x. This is right side limit. That's why there is no minus here. There is minus here because it is left side limit. So let me do the math now. Minus x times minus one. That is becoming one plus x. Sorry, one minus x over x. And this is x minus one over x. So let's do the limit. One minus minus one over x over one. Over minus one, sorry. And this is what I'm doing. I think I'm not carrying a lot of Sorry. This is what I'm doing. Minus one. Replace it. That is one minus x is what? Minus one over x, which is minus one. And here is going to be one minus one over x, which is minus one. So this is giving me zero. One minus one, zero over minus one is zero. And this is giving me minus two. That's one plus one, that is two. Two divided by minus one, minus two. Plus it is zero. Plus I got zero. One, okay, minus one. Thank you very much. So this is minus one. I'm using one. That was the reason. So minus one. Yeah. Ali should be two. Minus one minus one is minus two. Divided by minus one. The right side. Very good. Thank you. Minus two over minus one. I thought I'm not minus one. So now, the limit here is minus minus. And the limit here is two. Oh, that means your mind. So, uh, the, 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 let's use your mind, Joe. Wait, 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 so minus two and plus two. So for this one now, the limit does not exist because left side limit is different from right side limit. Now, the second class work is try it using limiting x to one. Try it limiting x to one and let's see. Why it does not exist as well. Please, can you guys try that now? Try it using one. That means this is what I want. Stop this. Give me this. Next time, one, one. Next time, one, one. Over one. The limit is not going to exist. Uh, it will be.
So the answer is so confused. The answer is not complete. Yes. 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 This limit. Okay, yes, The limit does not exist. Okay, thank you. It doesn't. Shall we create this? I would have loved to start from the first principle, but it is useless. There is no question in the exam that will ask you to use the first principle or something. Right? So it is less. Let us. Yes. So, so the pressure is not You will be doing the first principle here. Yeah. If you really want to move, mute your mic. Uh, this is irritating me as I'm hearing my voice again. Ah. Um, I said we are not doing the first principle. We are going to enter what straight away? Calculus, no history, forget it. Number one, differentiate x squared minus 5x. That means you are looking for the derivative of x squared minus 5x. It can be given as f of x equals x squared minus 5x. Or y equals x squared minus 5x. If it's given as f of x, that means you are finding f prime of x. f prime of x, that is the derivative. You are differentiating it. How do you differentiate? Simple thing. Two times, one is here, right? Version of x, that's one x, raised to power the two that we get, minus one. Minus five, times one that I am bringing from this place, one x raised to the power one minus one. This is two x raised to the power two minus one, one. You multiply the front here by the power. So better. Minus five times x raised to the power 1 minus 1 is x raised to the power 0. Anything raised to the power 0 is 1. That is a law of physics. 
So the answer is 2x minus 5. You differentiated this. In essence, when you have 7x, the derivative will be 7. When you have 9x, the derivative will be 9. When you have minus 7x, the derivative will be minus 7. Just remove x down. Please, my network was bad, though. Please, can you ah. come again? I'm going to Come here. Sim differentiate x squared. That means b dx of x squared. So this is going to be a two that is here. This two here. Multiply it by x. That is two x. Raised to power two minus one. Raised to power one. The answer is two x. That is where I have my two x here. And this is minus five x. Don't stress yourself at all. Just remove the x and have minus 5. In differentiation, you just remove it. Since it is only x, it's not x raised to power 2 or something. And you have started with a simpler work. Try this. Sorry, let's try this together. 2. So, f of x equals, or let's use y equals. Here now, we, we found we are given f of x. So we differentiated by using f prime of x. Here now we'll be given y. y equals 7x cubed minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 3. Now find the y dx. Please listen. Find the y dx. The y dx means 3 times this 7. That's 21. x raised to power 3 minus 1, 2. I'm sure you are getting it. Check out. Are you getting it? Again, listen. This is the way calculus comes originally. Why equals a x raised to power n? So you multiply a by n, that is a n, x raised to power. Now we move one from n minus one. Minus one. Here now. 3 times 7, 21. X raised to power 3 minus 1. Two. Minus 2 times 2, 4. X raised to power 2 minus 1, 1. Plus 7x, you move the x down. And anything that doesn't have the variable will be 0. You get it. The derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of a constant is zero. So therefore, the derivative of this function, that means the y dx is equal to 21x squared minus 4x plus 7. 21x squared minus 4x plus 7. That is the derivative. Now let us look at another derivative. Yes. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. 
I'm given f of x to be 3x cubed minus 9x squared plus 7x minus 2. Now, find f prime of x. That means the same as find dy dx. Everyone, listen again. We are doing this together now. I'm given 3x cubed minus 9x squared plus 7x minus 2. So how do we go with it? I'm multiplying this 3 by this 3. That is 3 times 3. 9. x raised to power 3 minus 1. This 3 minus 1, which remains 2. Minus, this minus, 2 times 9, 18. You need to know the steps. Finish. x raised to power 2 minus 1, 1. Plus 7 times x raised to power 0. That's what I need, because 1 times 7 is 7. x raised to power 1 minus 1. So that is it. Minus zero. That is a constant without any variable. That will just be zero. So I'm, I'm left with 9x squared minus 18x plus seven. So this is the derivative. Please, did you understand it, guys, online? Any question on this? Any question on this? Okay. Any question from you guys? I'm, I'm touching you. Any question from you? Uh, no question. No question. Thank you. Nine x squared. And what do you say, please? Is there anyone asking a question? No question. No question. No question, no question for now. Okay, I'm giving one more example and class works. Uh, I want to ask a question, please. Yeah. This particular okay. uh, method, this particular method of differentiation is known as which method? The um, coefficient method, coefficient method, well, multiplication coefficient. by coefficient. Okay, multiplication okay. By method. okay, okay. So I call it the power, power method as well. Power rule or something. I think I saw that in the textbook. Power rule, yes. Power rule. But it's Okay. One last example. No, I'm not Sorry, last answer. That's the last answer. Yes, that's the final answer. So we call it the derivative of this function. Derivative of the function. Derivative of this function. Excuse me, I do that in zero. Because the derivative of any constant is zero. Just like the limit of any constant is that constant. The derivative of any constant is zero. Okay, the last example. Shall we go ahead? Now, see, guys, this is given as an expression now. Find C f of x is this. Well, let me use f of x again. Y is this. I'm using the y dx. Find the y dx. Everybody, the y dx is going to be 3 times that's 3x raised to power 3 minus 1. Two. Minus 2 times 2 over 7 x raised to power one is coming in. Two times coefficient. Two times two over seven. No, but how do we get three x squared? Three times x three x. So three raised to power minus three minus three three, three, three minus one two. So two times two four over this seven minus this is under two plus seven. 
So we have 3x squared minus 4 over 7x minus 2. As you can ask. Please, Ali. Wait. Excuse me, Ali. Why is why is the power not affecting the seven? Hey, it's affecting it now. I said but you I'm don't using two, 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 two times two over seven. That is uh -huh. yes, that zero point two eight zero point two eight eight. So two times zero point two eight eight times six. That is what I'm doing. So two over seven as two times two over seven. That's four divided by seven. Zero point five six seven. So if number one, y equals to two x squared minus seven x squared minus nine, find the y dx. Number two, find the y dx. Uh, when y uh, when x equals to two or two x and seven x equals to two. Ali, please, sorry, that was the number one. Please, I'm not saying Bodo. Hello, please, can you hear me? What did you say? The question number one. Uh, this is it now. This, uh, this is it. On. This is the number one. On the I can see it clearly. You wrote two x cubed minus seven x squared plus nine. Like from the square to constant. The cube. What? What do you say? I can't hear you, Amina. Yeah. Amina. Hello, can I you can't hear you. Now? Speak. No problem. You can hear me. No, sorrow. See on network. I didn't understand your question. This is number one on the board. Find the y dx. 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 9. Find the y dx here. 6x squared minus 14x. 6x squared minus 14x plus 7. There's no ah, plus, plus 7. Okay. Sorry, plus. Okay. 6x squared minus 14x. Finish. Step on is 17. Okay, sorry, Ali. Please, what are we saying? The question number one that. Okay, what's wrong with question number one, Amina? No, 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 there's no problem. Really. Amina. I mean, don't I let mean, me call for the Just please your Let us leave you. No problem. Maybe later we ask you. Just please your work. Let's pray. Okay. Pray to you. Um, Ali. Look at it. You number one, number one, find the right way. You get this x square minus number two. Number two, find the right way. After finding the right dx, you now enter two. Use two to replace x in your answer. That means you get 19. Who is that? Mute your mind. Ninety. Ninety. 
Please, for those of you online here, yeah. have you gotten number two? Is there anyone that has got number two? It's 17 now. It's just two people that got 17. What about others that are here? You guys are not the only one here, Joe. Hey, you solve it now. Let's see if it's right. Yes, the answer is nine. You. Don't be true. The answer is nine. Okay, since that's the case. For number nine. Two, I I so, for number two, for number two, you find the YDX first. After getting the YDX, you just use two to represent the value of X, use two as the value of X, then you are going to get your answer. They said it is 17. So, that's how you go with the second one. So, let us continue. Let's start the rules of calculus. This is just the power rule. Okay, I, I want to rush now, guys. So you need it to be, you'll be very attentive. Mm -hmm. Let's take the photo. Polar truth is just about a simple formula. When y equals something times something, a product means multiplication operation. That means u times v. U times v. Y equals U V. U is a function. V is another function. So Y is the product of the two functions. So find Y dx. In that case, Y dx is going to be the formula here. We call the formula the product rule. The product rule. The Y dx is going to be V the U dx plus U the V dx. Finish. So now let us look at two functions. Write the formula down first. Let us look at two functions that look like this. Two functions that are connected um, with multiplication. That means y equals, this is a function, 3x minus 1 times another function, 2x plus 1. Two x plus one. So, so the yes, dx. The u dx means differentiate this. The u dx is equal to differentiate three x. That is ordinary three. And differentiate minus one. That is zero. So the u dx is three. And the v dx is going to be differentiate two x plus one. That is differentiate two x is two. Just remove x, and differentiation of 1 is just 0. So the answer is 2 here. Now use the formula. y equals v du dx plus u dv dx. What is v? v is, v is 2x plus 1. Don't forget. 2x plus 1 times the u dx is 3 times 3. I can put it at the front. Plus u, u is 3x minus 1 times the v dx. The v dx is 2. I can put it there. Expand the bracket. I have 3 times 2x, 6x, plus 3 times 1, 3, plus 2 times 3x, 6x, minus 2 times 1, 2. Here now I'm having 6x plus 6x, 12x, 3x minus 3 minus 2, 1. So this is the value. This is the y dx of the function. We just use the product rule. If you don't want to use the product rule, expand this bracket and use the power rule for it. You are still going to get the same answer. Pdu you dx, you'll see the dx. Any question on product rule? 
I'm taking one more example. The UDX means I'm differentiating U with respect to X. That's three X. Differentiate three X. That would be three. Like just remove the X straight away. And differentiate yeah. minus one. That is zero. So I have three here as the UDX. For the VDX, differentiate two X. That's two. One, zero. Uh, how I got my two. Just need to practice differentiation. Differentiation, no matter how you <laughs> So, another example is, after the example, I'm supposed to have mentioned something which I omitted mistakenly, or forgotten, or forgetting, or forgetting, or forgetting. Okay, any question from you guys here? Hey. No. Any question? No, not for now. Santi, somebody beat me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there are some more, there are some that are delayed. Hey, before you can use Google, you will see that they are connected with multiplication. Brackets in Luda Wapo. And brackets means multiplication. So you have to use Google. You understand? Brackets means multiplication. So you have to use the Google. Google, you know multiplication is Google. So you have to use the Google. Yeah, right. Uh, 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 a question like this that there is brackets. Once there is a bracket in a question like this, that you have a, maybe two brackets like this, uh, just to like this product. Uh, at the same time, pressure and pressure, the same number of Okay. Another example of product two. That's a standard integral. I would advise you to go and cram. When y equals to sine x, what is y equals? When y equals to cos x, what is y equals? When y equals to tan x, what is y equals? When y equals to sine x, what is y equals? When y equals to cos x, what is y equals? When y equals to go by the x, what is the y dx? When y equals to j to our x, what is the y dx? When y equals to our x, what is the y dx? When y equals to our x, what is the y dx? This is a I'll just give you, I'll list them for you. You have to write them. I'm going to cry. So you can't see that part of the board. What do you say? You can't see that part of the board. I have no okay. Like this one. Is it showing now? Yes. Can you see it now? Yes, sir. Hello, Ali. Basically. Hello, I can hear you. Yeah, please. Can you give us the short course instead of us to be doing this kind of there's no short cut. I mean there is no short cut. No short cut is possible. Uh, Ali no there's short cut. Short if we are doing the exam, not COP. See, if you are doing the exam, you use product rule. You use product rule. Product rule. Okay. You think you can expand square sign x. Now, we are, this is the essence of the product rule. That's why I decided not to tell you anymore. x squared sign x 
I didn't have explained the standard and take the standard derivative now. I will take this as the next example. X squared sin x. Do you want to say what do you expand it? Maybe they are connected with multiplication x squared times sin x u v. So what are you expanding here? I mean the sources. No shortcuts. Okay, no problem. Yeah. This one, this one. Uh, I do very good way the uh I don't know. And this week. So you do let us start down. Let us get out. We get out. Post it pretty alive. Okay. This one says f of x equals x minus one times two x plus three. X minus one times two x plus three. Find f prime of x. This is not f inverse of x, so f prime of x. Okay, how do we go with that? We know that is going to be u equals x minus 1 here. And v equals 2x plus 3 here. That's the logic. So the u dx differentiates 1 x, 1. The v dx. Differentiate two x, two, two. Differentiate two x. Just remove the x. Finish. Two. Okay. The y dx is use the product rule. Equals v d u dx plus u d v dx. What is your u? Your v. Your v is two x plus three times the u dx is one plus U, the u is x minus 1 times the v dx is. So I have 2x plus 3 plus 2 times x, 2x minus 2. 2x times 2, 2x plus 2x plus 3 minus 2 plus 1. Yeah. So the y dx equals 4x plus 1. Any question online? Was I too fast? I can explain again. No. We are good to go. We are good to go. No. Very good. So please do this. <laughs> Don't forget the product rule under any circumstance. After you complete the question, then I will take the standard. Please read out your question. Please read out your question. Why is equals to what? Why equals x squared open bracket two x minus three? Okay, thank you. X squared open bracket two x minus three. <laughs> now go for the recordings. Yeah, yeah. spoil our function. It's okay. Ah. She didn't buy for you. Any any question, guys? Have you started this one? Yes. Uh, somebody is listening now. Six, I'm six, listening. Six, six. Hello, can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Sorry, please. Me, I'm just coming to the class. I want to ask you if, uh, if, if you recorded this thing will be uploaded. Two as great as four as yeah, I can miss the the recording. All right, thank you. So, please, how do I assess it after the class? I will rule now. It will be sent to the group. All right. All right. Have you got it? Have you done this? Yeah, 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. 
I mean, no, it's done. Yeah. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's this guy's person is the This is the one. This is the one. This is the Six square minus six. Six square minus six x. Six x What have you got in now? U is x squared. B is 2x minus 3. Hey, no. Yeah. Uh, yes, 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x squared. Which was 4x squared? Please calm down. Yeah, I don't understand. 2x minus 3 is what? 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Uh -huh. yeah. This is so much in love. Where do you see two x times two x? Please, we are not talking. Please, guys, like, let's meet our mind. This is the first choice. Where do you see this is... two x minus three? You get two. Where are they two x again? Listen to this. Two x squared. Two x. This The u the x is going to be two two x. And the V the X is going to be two because I remove X differentiate the Y the X is V the U the X plus U the V the X. What is B? B is two X minus three times the U the X is what two X plus U is what X squared. Times the VDX is two. So I have four X squared minus six X plus two X squared. So this is up to you. Understand? Yes. So this is going to give me six X squared minus six X. So I can break six S out and open a bracket X minus one. No, if I just give the answer this way. No, that's one, two, two, three, two, three, two, three. How do you get the two x? It's supposed to be two. It's going to be two. Here, yeah, this is u. U is x squared. The u the x is going to be two x. This two x. And here it is. B is two x minus three times the u the x. That is times two x. Okay, thank you for writing the u. That's it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay, another rule after product rule. If this thing doesn't come in this form, B, where u is a function, b is another function. That is, y equals x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. How do you let me do something for that? x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. Find the y the x. Still not for that. x squared minus 1 over 2x plus 1. So finding the y the x in this case means I'm using that rule that I called the quotient rule because I have u at the top 
I have to be a denominator. Ali, we can't see that part of the board. I said now, you know, what we just dealt with now is U times P. In this case now, we're dealing with U divided by P. That is a quotient. In that case, we'll be using the quotient rule. Function f is another function. So what's the quotient rule? The y dx is given as b d dealt with product rule earlier. This is the quotient rule. B d u dx minus u d b d x over b squared. That is the formula. Know it. But these things we come up. The questions are much. See, if you've gotten 40, what you do, just manage it. What you have 70 in the exam. Everything you get in your theory, you get it. You can also come in the university. You can't get it. In this case, that means I have a function y equals x minus 1 over 2x plus 3. This is my function. Let me change it. 2x plus 3 over x minus 1. This is my function given. So I'm looking for the derivative of this function. I'm looking for the y dx. Before I can look for the y dx, I need to find the value of the u dx and the v dx. I know that my u is the numerator and my v, my v is the denominator. So u equals 2x plus 3 and v equals x minus 1. So the u dx equals 2 and the v dx equals 1. Now use the formula that the y dx equals, don't let us write it again. B D U D X. What is B? X minus one. Two minus B D D X. What is U? Two X plus three times the B D X one. Online. Are we making sense? Are we moving together? Yes. 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 So divided by. B squared. What is B? X minus one squared. So now I'm having two times X. Minus, minus, open this bracket, that's minus times two X. gives me 
2x cancels 2x, right? That's 2x minus 2x, zero. I have minus 2 minus 3, so right? Minus 5 all over. You can, you can, you can still leave it this way. But it's not expanded, and you can expand it. It's up to you. So I think it's more, it makes sense this way. Jabs will be the questions. So don't be confused. But you make a need this way to No, they will not give questions like this. If you do your minus five, put this in open bracket, x minus one squared. And then uh, this to power one. It is this one and the one. It's possible that you don't learn now. You don't learn from the last lesson. We start together. Doctor, Doctor, Philip. Did we? Hey, hey. Now we start. We try everything that there are questions. Hello, I don't. Sometimes that I do not forget. Now we don't. Hey, yes, yes. Ah, it's happened so much. Like ah, oh man. Oh, that thing happened with you. No, no. Okay. Any question from you guys? Any question from you? No problem, no problem. Ah, this is quotient two. We are taking one more for it as well. And I will explain the standard derivatives. Now we are going to the standard derivatives. Yes, after the standard derivatives. After the standard derivatives. I think one of the derivatives. The standard derivatives. The standard derivatives. The standard derivatives. This is just a drop of water and water. And I'll show you that. I can take calculus till the end of the month. It's not bothering me. Yes, you give me his name, of course, my idiots. If you really want to know it, come and pay me. You can call me private. If you want to know it, pay just on the time. I'm not sure about it. So, who do you want to do this? No, no, no. No, no. I said, who do you want to do this? I said, I'm going to do this. It's only drunk, I didn't say it. No, 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 no. Okay. Hey. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me tell you. It's just like I'm watching you. So the next example, guys, we still have our rule here. You know what? It's very important to know the rule of fact. If you know the process and don't know the rule, there will be nothing to do with the example. So know the rule of fact. Just cram it. After the example, at least cram it for the example. I'm given y equals x squared over x. Yeah, this. <laughs> this is the function. Finding the y dx now. To find the y dx, I'm going to say u is at the top for quotient two. This thing is a form of unique divided by unique. Five divided by seven. Two divided by eight. Because it is in that form, I must use that quotient rule. That form is what we call the quotient form. So u is the denominator, that is x squared. V is the denominator, that is 3x minus 1. Now, I can't just come and use the formula now, because I still need to get the u dx, need to get the u dx. Now, the u dx means differentiating u with respect to x. That means 2 times the coefficient of x, which is 1. That is 2. X raised to power 2 minus 1. That is ordinary 1. So I have 2x there. No one will have 1. Don't show it. So the VDX is now. 
And it's not how we come about to really where three people. Just remove the X straight away. It's useless. If you have three, because it is one times three, three. X raised to power one minus one, that's zero. Three X raised to power zero. The fourth law of indices is zero index. It's giving you one. Anything raised to power zero is one. So three times one, three. That is why we have to So minus one, the derivative of a constant is zero. That's why I'm not writing it. So I've gotten the UDX, I've gotten the UDX. Then use the formula, the Y DX equals this. What is my B? 3X minus one times the UDX. UDX is 2X. I can put it at the front so it makes sense. Minus U, U is X squared times the BDX, that is three. I'm multiplying three, this is the formula, U times the BDX, that's three times x squared all over b squared that is 3x minus 1 squared so 2x times 3x that is 2 times 3 6 x times x x squared so 6x squared 3 2x times minus 0 2x times 1 still 2x so minus 3x squared is a all over expanding this you can expand this you can as well leave it if you expand it you are going to have 9x squared minus 6x plus 2 but if you are expanding it i'll still have 3x minus 1 squared so let us do the differentiation the arithmetic 6x squared is, is having x squared right 3 2 is having x squared so with their like terms, because of that, I can say 6x squared minus 3x squared. That becomes 3x squared. And minus 2x is there. I can just multiply it. Minus 2x. All over 3x minus 1 squared. So this is the y x. You get it better. So you don't need to become a common I mean, I'm coming, please. I'm coming, please. Okay. If you have to build the graph, if you have to build, build the graph, write it this way. Type three x raised to power two. Start with the graph. If you are okay, you have to tell the gap yourself. That's what you call lock. You know that. That's what you call lock now. That is what you call lock now. So I'm correct like this. I'm correct if I explain this. For which one should I use? That's lock. You don't know about the so what's your question from the from online, please? That was the question I wanted to answer. Which one are we supposed to use? You said the one that will expand it or this one. But normally, 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 me, there is something I do, I used to do, or I always do, is that I will observe the way their, their answers have been coming. Did it come this way or the other way? If it was the other way, I did that last semester. If it was the other way, then I would expand it. Or if it comes mostly this way, I'll take this way, that this is what it is. And, and I measure the line. If you want to have a vision for my And I may not be lucky. So it depends. That's luck. That's luck. You've known what you want to do. That's luck and destiny. I wish everyone the best. Okay, that is quotient rule. Because of that, I'd like you to differentiate y equals 3x squared over 2x minus 5. Differentiate, please. The formula is at the top. Yeah. Try to know it. I <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone 
the time I used to meet him. Oh, okay. Okay. Only one observes a lot. This is the Square minus thirty s divided by which Over two x minus five square. Okay. 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 Okay.
This working long ago. So I guess six and two long. Uh, six S squared. You correct, bro. Nine S squared minus six S plus one square. Ah, this way. Don't make me skip the school. You sure? Andrew, you just wake up. You woke up. You sleep before. Let me ask him. Now, I don't know. Ah, it's easy. Ah, so you try, you can do it now. Are you thinking yourself? Okay. So, the general rule now says that y is going to be the function of the function of the function. So, that means three functions are involved. Y is going to be the function of the composite function. So that composite function, u is going to be something. So in chain rule, y is going to be a function of u, and u is a function of x in chain rule. Therefore, the y dx is the y d times the u d x. This is the formula for chain rule. They are doing something like that. Now. The y d x equals to the y d times u d x. This is the condition. Y is a function of u originally, and u itself is equal to another thing. It's a function of x. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's the function. Uh, that's the function of another thing. <laughs> so y, in that case now, I have y equals to 2x plus 3 raised to power 2. Now, this is what I mean. Y is a function of this thing. I will say this thing is u, this 2x plus 3. I will represent it using u. That means y is equal to u raised to power 2. But u itself is a function. u is the function of 2, is a function which is 2x plus 3. This is where I'm using this thing. Let, let me let me clear. You are given the question in this form. You are given the question in this form. You have this raised to power this. Whenever you have a question that is raised to power something, you know you are using the quotient and the general. Okay. We also call it the function of the function rule. Function of the function. Function of the function. So now, that thing that is inside the bracket has been part by something. Make it u, where u equals 2x plus 3. Stuff like this are very too simple to solve. Then it's given. That's what it's Okay. No, U equals to 2x plus 3. So the U dx is going to be what? 2, right? Are we together? No. This one. U is this 2x plus 3. Ah, why is U there? I have used it to knock u equals to 2x plus 3. So the u dx is equal to 2. You know, we are differentiating u. Wait, that is why it is u that is inside it. Now we can now say y equals to this thing we represented this using u, right? u squared. You can see we have two different functions now. Mm. u is a function of x, y is a function of. That is why it is called the composite rule or chain rule or function of a function. Because this is a composite function. Now, differentiate y with respect to u. The y, who is lost? Tell your love. Again, the question is 2x plus 3. y equals 2x plus 3. 
squared. The next thing is to represent that thing that, that is inside the bracket I'm putting about you. Represent it like okay. u equals 2x plus 3. So y equals 2x plus 3 squared. That is u squared. So the y du, this one is not going to be the y dx because it is a function of u, it is not a function of x. So the y du is 2 times y u and the u is. And the u dx, that means u is a function of x. Are we together, everyone, about that? So the u dx is going to be 2. Now, use the formula that the y dx is equal to the u dx times y u. Yeah, what is the u dx? 2 times the y du, 2 u. Abi? So the y dx, no finish, come on. 2 times 2, 4. What is u? 2x plus 3. So you can see that I don't even need to use any formula. That's right. Get the answer. I don't know how to do it. Maybe it's just by solving something. I don't know if we are solving it. That's all. Right. I don't know how to do it. Okay. 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 Question. What do you say, bro? The question, the question, the question. This is the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Is it 3 minus 7x or what? Uh, 3 minus 7x, you know. Okay, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. okay. Oh. I don't know, try class. <laughs> I 
Only my last twenty eight to put back at three by those. Put it here too much. Ah, oh, you too much. I think I was doing why, mean it. Ah, put it here. I don't know. The girl don't know. know. She don't know. She don't know. Person. It is like this. I said the thing and, and close in the bracket should be u. So u equals three minus let's see what seven x minus three minus seven x. So the u the x, everyone, listen or oh, please. The u the x is going to be minus seven. That means the equation of x there will just be the derivative minus seven. Guys, listen to me, please. And y equals u raised to power. Four. So the y du differentiating y with respect to u is going to be four times one u. That is four u raised to power four minus one raised to power three. So the y dx equals to the u dx times the y du. What is the u dx? U dx is u dx is u dx is minus seven. So minus seven times the y du is four u raised to power three. That is minus twenty eight u raised to power three. So that is minus twenty eight. So what is u now? Three minus seven x times three minus seven x all raised to power three. This is the y dx. Please, at least be writing them down, even if you are unable to go to get this part of it. Then I must 
everyone, I want to give the standard derivatives now. So I think we might probably stop there. I intended to stop by the call. So when y equals to sine x, anyone to tell me the y dx here? Yeah? Because x, y dx is not x. When y equals sine x, that's all we call standard derivative. When y equals sine x, the y dx, uh, the y dx, like just knowing the standard derivatives. There are some standard derivatives that you should just know instead of going. If you don't know it like that, before you can understand it, normally you use the first principle or the graphical method to get y dx of sine x to the cos x. But it is too long. First principle. You even need to know some trigonometric and then it's very well first. Okay, now, because of that, I won't be deriving it. I'm going to be writing the function. I'm going to be writing the derivatives. If y equals to sine x, then dy dx is equal to cos x. Please note what we are doing. We are still going to use it here. I can't just teach and I, I can't just mention it and leave. I will yeah. apply it for you to use. Please stick out to us. When y equals to, when they say y equals to sine x. Find the y dx. It might come out in the exam. You don't have to so solve it again. Just know that y dx is cos x. That is what we are doing. Do you understand? So y, the y, the x. They are given y to be sine x. Now, what is the y dx? Just know it is cos x. Just stress yourself. So when y is equal to cos x, then the y dx is minus sine x. Let me go. When y equals tan x, then the y dx is. I'm measuring the standard derivative. I mean, if they are given y to the sine x, then they say find the y dx. You don't need to find anything. Just know that y dx is cos x. That's the way I And when y equals to cos x, Know that y dx is minus sine x. You can even bring it in questions like that. When y equals tan x, anybody with the y dx? Sex squared x. So the y dx is sex squared x. We keep going when y equals sec x, the y dx is what? Anyone? Anybody here, everybody go silent like this. When y equals to sec x. So, the y dx is sec x and x. So, when y equals cot x, that's cotangent x, y dx is minus cosec squared x. When y equals cosec x, then the y dx is minus cosec x cot x. When y equals lin x, lin x means log x to base e. Log x to base e. That means the Napierian logarithm of x. We call it the Napierian logarithm of Natural logarithm, natural logarithm of x. Natural, that you understand how this is. Link x, natural logarithm of x. Then the y dx is 1 over the x. When y is equal to log x base. Okay. If the y dx is 1 over x times. x times. Log x. 
log x plus a. What about x times log x plus a? Yeah. So what else? When y equals to a raised to power x, is this log? Ln. Ln. Natural log. Ln. Just know this one's up and go. When is Start using them to work, you know them. To be just, it's just to cram them till Monday. Uh, e raised to power x, when y equals to e raised to power x, the y gets is still equals to e raised to power x. Uh, when y equals e raised to power x, y gets is still equals to e raised to power x. This sex x do I be able to sex and sex x and x? What is this? Sec x and x. So please note this one down. After that question, what is the next one? Lim, ln, natural logarithm of x. That is ln, ln, ln. That is log x this e. Pne is the Euler constant. 2.301. Um, log e. X log. x log a please everyone here when x when y goes to log x base a the y dx is going to be one over x log a base e yes my apologies for the one thing i gave you that was a big sum. Okay, guys. Let's have three questions with them. Yes, we are, we are just doing it. Okay. Yes, I have just mentioned it. Uh, I don't know what I am. I don't know what I am. I don't know what I am. Ah. Number one says y equals sine x cos x. Number two says y equals sine y equals sine square x. Number three says y equals cosec squared cosec x over X. I think we can use the three rules you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And number four says y equals cos cos three x. I didn't hear what you did. I didn't hear what you did. Yes, my friends. Mm -hmm. to power x. So please, guys, note what we have there. We are solving these things here now. I will end the class. Are we still together? Yes. Okay. So, hope you've written this down. Yes, if you've not, 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 if you've not known enough and are using it here, then it's over. So, y equals sine x 
when it was sine x plus x. So you can see that they are connected with multiplication, sine x times cos x. So that means u is equal to sine x, b is equal to cos x. We are using the product rule here now. So the, y, the u dx is what? When y equals sine x, the, the, the u dx y is what? Y is cos x. And when y equals to cos x, the y dx is what? Minus sine x. So the b dx is minus sine x. Now let's use the rule. The y dx equals b du dx plus u dx. Yes, this is the product rule. That is, b is cos x times the u dx is also cos x plus u is sin x. The v dx is minus sin x. So the answer here is what? Cos x times cos x is cos squared x. Minus is here. Minus sin x times sin x is sine squared x. Mm -hmm. So this is the y the x of this function. This is the y the x of the function. Mm -hmm. This is the derivative of this function. And even it's plus now, we can, use, we can say it is a trigonometric identity. I will say it is equal to one. But this one is minus, it's not an identity. Mm -hmm. So this one now, you are saying u is like having u raised to power two. Y equals to u raised to power two. This is one of Chain rule, yes, cos times cos, that is cos squared. Is that cos that times cos? So let's do this one now. Please, online, did you understand what is going on? Any question? Yes, Any question? Not. Okay. We'll soon stop. Just three more now. This is this is the we use the product rule to do this. That's the only rule we can use to solve this. Only the product rule. What is this one? After the product rule, let's use this. Y equals sine squared x. This is like saying we have something inside bracket raised to power two. I said whenever you have a power, just know you are using the chain rule. So I can say u equals sine x. Then the u dx equals what? Cos x. That's the derivative of sine x. Please, I want to ask. I Sorry. want to ask. I want to ask. Sorry. How did you get the minus Sorry. sign? How did how did you get the minus sign from the from the uh, from the sign uh, 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 from uh, minus sine x uh, minus square x? You got my, that's my, minus. Where is it? The first example I rubbed up, Abby. Yes, yes. Uh, you... What I did is minus sine times plus sine. That is going to give us minus sine squared. Like okay. minus one times plus one. That's minus one squared. Okay, okay. That's minus one. Yeah. Okay. okay. So sine x, the derivative of sine x is cos x. So y is equal to u raised to power 2. The derivative of y with respect to 2, that's dy du with respect to u. The y du is 2u. So the y dx equals the y du times the u dx. That's the chain rule. You can write it as that using the function of the function rule. The y du is 2u times the u dx is cosine x. 2u, that is 2 times u is what? Sine x. 2 sine x cos x. That is the answer. 2 sine x cos x. This is known as sine 2x, actually. This is a trigonometric identity. Sine 2x equals to this. So this is the dy dx. This is the derivative of sine squared x, actually. This is the derivative of sine squared x. Okay, the next one is this one now. It is in form of a quotient. 
So I'm going to use the quotient rule here. The number three, quotient rule. Please, I think you are putting almost everything now. You can snap your notes for me. Everything. Okay, the third one, now we are using the quotient rule for y equals cosec x over cos x. Please try it, everyone. Try it, here's the quotient rule for you. It's up to you. Try this one, y equals to cosec x over cos x. So the u dx is equal to minus cosec x cotangent x. V equals cotangent x. So the v dx is equal to minus cosec squared x. So the y dx is equal to the formula v the u dx minus u the v dx over u squared over v squared. V is what? V is cotangent x. What's that? No, oh, cut it long. The answer is long. <laughs> okay, uh, that's what this person said. But x times the u dx is minus cosec x cot x minus u is cosec x times the v dx is minus cosec squared x all over v squared, that is cotangent squared x. That's gonna be minus cosec x cotangent squared x minus cosec, sorry, plus cosec cubed x over a, over cotangent squared x. So you can bring something out now. Cosec squared can be, okay, only cosec can be out. Just leave it this way, you don't need to simplify it. The y dx is equal to the answer. What do you get? Last question. Ma, what did you get? Ma. <laughs> yeah, I get. I get cosec square x minus two cosec s. I blow you. That's too simple. That's too simple. Try it again, bro. Abek, good try. 
So everyone, let's call it a day. Don't try. This Thank you very much. Really try. This is what we have. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you.